Heavenly Gifts Jesus elucidates the secret of the lost son, known as the prodigal son. March 23rd, 1841 Jesus reveals through Jacob Lorber in the work Heavenly Gifts, Volume 1, translated and spoken by Pascal. Jesus says, You have read in my book, the Holy Scriptures, Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verse 11 to 32, the story of the lost son, and you probably have read and heard of it already multiple times. But I tell you, there is not a single verse or chapter in the entire book that might contain something greater than the parable of the lost son. And there won't easily be found a passage that might be as difficult to understand as this one. You should know the reason for this, because it is of utmost importance, and as such it is an essential key for the internal contemplation of yourself. The reason is the following. I often speak sublime things out of my wisdom through the love, but also often seemingly petty things out of love through the light of wisdom. Now realize that in the first case, only so much is given to you which your current individuality can possibly bear, but in the second case, a veiled infinity is given to you, whose finite development not even eternity will accomplish. And behold, such a seemingly small gift is the lost son. Yes, I am telling you, if you knew what is actually concealed behind the lost son, Truly, even archangels would want to attend your school. I've shown you many a thing in the preceding hours, what is happening on earth in the present time, whereby I even concealed the most disgraceful and nefarious things. I have shown you the deficient legal framework in general. I have shown you the madness of Asia, the barbaric nature of Africa, the vileness of America, certainly only a small part of it. I have shown you the judicature of England, preferably in its outer relations, as well as the handling of criminals on the mentioned coasts of Australia. I have also shown you an abused country in the Deep South, the way it was, and to a large extent, still is. Yet I have to call to your attention something regarding this land. Firstly, and preferably, that you should pay a twofold attention to what is said about this country and secondly, that you should not take it literally in any way, what was said about this country. The reason for that will be shown to you in the following. Further, I have shown to you the most tyrannic and strict circumstances of other island nations, and preferably of the Japanese, as well as of the northern state of Russia. Even though the things in the world behave as such, I have not shown you these situations that you should see what happens in the world. For you will read such things, and even a thousand times worse things in the future. The reason why I told you this is none other than that you might recognize the great secret of the lost son a little better, to your greatest benefit. Now you are probably thinking, what does the lost son have to do with all of these worldly cruelties? You are full of curiosity about how the lost son could find his way out of this worldly maze, but I'm telling you. It is easier to find and understand the lost son in all of these scenes and to grasp him therein than to fit a camel through the eye of a needle. To understand all of this, it is necessary for you to know who this lost son actually is. If I show you the lost son, even only by name, truly you would have to be struck by a sevenfold blindness if you would not realize in an instant that a large blanket had been lifted from your eyes. And now, prepare yourselves to hear the name. Behold, his name is Lucifer. This name contains the whole compendium of the lost son, which will be eternally unfathomable and infinite for you. Now consider for yourselves that almost all of the present humanity is nothing else but limbs of this lost son, and namely, those people who are descendants of Adam's unblessed bloodline. See, this lost son has taken all wealth that was due to him and wastes it now throughout infinite and far extended periods of time, as you perceive it. You are familiar with the story of the lost son and how his fate was in the end. 
Now look at all these circumstances in the world, and truly, you will see nothing but the final fates of the lost son in an extended measure. What do you say to a very sick person when his feet are cold, and on his forehead the cold sweat appears? Truly, you won't need a doctor's degree to be able to tell. With kind of a prophetic spirit, only a few and heavy pulse beats more, and the weary of agony and of life has finished his struggle. Firstly, touch the feet of the lost son in the south of the earth. Secondly, touch his head in the great realm of the north. Then put your hand on the old and tired heart of the church. Truly, you again would have to be more blind than the center of the earth if you weren't able to tell what hour of the great day it is now. But look, what now happens with the soul of the lost son? What I have told you about the souls which have the second sight. Look, their great distress spreads now in quick vibrations, and those reach the front of the father's house. And the vibrations of the enamored father are exchanging love with the vibrations of fear, misery and distress of the lost son. The soul of the lost son senses such a holy and gentle breeze from the house of the great father. The soul, encouraged by these holy vibrations, returns to its ramshackle house lifts it up again and returns in the greatest and the most self-demeaning humility into the house of the Eternal Father. But what is happening there? Behold, only the rags are removed from the sun and burnt, but the sun, as you know, will be received again. See, now you have the hidden secret of the prophetic number of man, which was hidden up to the present moment, revealed before your eyes. When you look at the circumstances of the time, truly you would have to be more than dead if you still are not able to perceive the holy vibrations of mercy which are flowing out of the Father's house in streams. You are limbs of the lost son as well. Expand your soul and let the spirit in your soul awaken and return with confidence and in all humility into the great realm of your most loving father, equal to the lost son. Truly, I tell you, he will be coming up to meet you halfway. Behold, the time of my grace has come near, and therefore I have given you these things, so that you should recognize that this great time is indeed here, the time of which the prophets have sung. Yes, the time which has been announced beforehand out of my mouth. Therefore, persevere only for another short season, and rejoice with great confidence. For truly, the great house of the Father has come closer to you than you anticipated. How you might recognize the lost son and all of these circumstances of time within yourselves, and how this lost son will be found again in every man, or how he will find himself again. How the great man can be won back in the little dear children. This will surely be revealed to you in the final hour. Amen.